I Show Speed could be the fastest growing YouTube streamer in history. He is now sitting at over 4 million subscribers, and just one year ago he had 10,000. The 17-year-old Cincinnati, Ohio native has dominated the platform, even at one point gaining 1 million subscribers in about 6 days. He has built some sort of a toxic and high-stress community that, at times, can push him to his limits, but this may not be all his fault. I mean, after all, live streaming in general can attract some of the worst viewers, pushing streamers to lash out and react in ways that don't represent them very well. When it comes to speed, the line between what's real and what isn't is so paper thin that sometimes it feels like you're not even watching a real person, but rather someone playing a character. Speed started his YouTube channel in late 2017 uploading NBA 2K and Fortnite highlights. One year later, he began live streaming himself playing Fortnite, but didn't really stay too consistent with it. It wasn't until April of 2020 when he got fully committed to live streaming, with a face cam and interacting with about five viewers. His game of choice, NBA 2K20. I started the video by saying Speed is 17 years old, but his age has been a bit of a mystery for some time. When he first started streaming, a person asked him in his chat what his age was. Tell me all day. Damn, they're 16, bro. He was reluctant to give him a straight answer. It's fairly common for people on the internet to not want to give their age. It's also common for young kids to tell people that they are older than they really are. I know when I was 13 on Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I would brag about being 15, thinking that that was so cool. The only reason why this matters is because very often in 2021, Speed did e-dates with Aiden Ross and various influencers where he tells girls that he is 19, so he will have a better chance at scoring a date with them, obviously misleading them because at the time he was actually 16. On the other hand, some people see this as harmful it's more so just for entertainment and nobody is taking it that seriously like when girls lie about the age it's just like yeah yeah oh my gosh she lied about her age bro all right let me get off this app bro but in spring of 2020 15 year old i show speed was laying down the groundwork for his streaming career double check and make sure you're subscribed why not hit the like button for me and make sure you're drinking water he stayed very consistent on NBA 2K20. He streamed every day and tried to get tapped into the community. He was lighthearted, funny, and happy. If he took an L, he would get a little stressed, maybe have a little freak out, but nothing more than a typical gamer. He was able to play with a bigger streamer, and he played really well. Got the shout out from him. For my son, I showed speed the first time that I have played with and shot nothing but green. This got him a couple more viewers, maybe around 10 or so on average. Unfortunately, NBA 2K kind of breeds toxicity, kind of like Call of Duty Modern Warfare lobbies. You can walk around a public gym and challenge random people to pick up games. Usually the loser will just end up screaming into the mic all kinds of heinous things that are totally unnecessary. I mean, games are competitive and trash talk is inevitable, but this game for some reason brings out the worst in people. Even in the early days, we can see it getting the best of speed. One y'all going to stream right now and say TJ, use a He spent the summer of 2020 grinding the game and trying to build up his viewership. He was averaging around 20 viewers and would eventually amass 1,000 subscribers, still keeping that positive energy, interacting with his chat, and getting to know them. He would only get toxic when other people from the community would come into his stream and try to mess with him. They would call him names and challenge him to games that he didn't want to play. Around this time, he came up with a winning strategy for growth on YouTube. He would do a two hour live stream, then post a six to 10 minute clip of the stream as a YouTube video with a better title, only posting the ones labeled funny reaction because those got the best views. They were basically just the buildup of him freaking out and what caused the freak out. This was a great growth strategy for him and he stayed consistent with this throughout summer of 2020. The Rage highlight videos were becoming a staple part of his brand and was slowly becoming the thing that people wanted to see the most from him. He streamed and uploaded every single day for months without fail. In October 2020, he got banned from streaming because YouTube thought he was 12 and you need to be 13 to stream. So basically, I, I can't stream no more, y'all, for a little minute, y'all, because of that last live stream, y'all, so I would not be streaming no more. This would be the first of many, many videos where he tells his chat that he can't stream anymore. The ban would only last one day, and he would be back the next day because YouTube was obviously in the wrong. NBA 2K21 came out, and the community hated it. Aiden Ross was a big part of the game's top players leaving and moving on to different things. There was still a demand out there for 2K21 content, 
Plus, Speed would play as a unique position, a post scorer. Most content creators didn't play as this position. He figured out a way to be different, and that's what got him attention. At the turn of the year, things started to change a little bit. He was still a bright, positive, happy-go-lucky guy, but his rage moments were getting more and more apparent. Now he even had a person consistently commenting on his videos, timestamping when he would have a freakout, which was making the audience just skip to those moments instead of watching him play normally. Another ban. It's a warning, so basically, I don't know if I'm gonna do Omegle no more. This video got him the most views that he ever got thus far, and again, he was back the next day. You'll notice this become a trend. For the first half of 2021, Speed just kept on being consistent with streaming, he experimented with horror games and Fortnite, but 2K was still his go-to. One thing that started happening that still does to this day is Speed being a victim of DDoS attacks. Basically, hackers who get his IP address, either by knowing where he lives in real life, or maybe he somehow leaked that information, they have the ability to overload his internet so his stream lags super hard, making him unable to stream. Every single time this would happen, Speed would run to make his broken heart videos of him very upset. How do I take my IP. I cannot stream whoever is booting me. Please stop. Hit me up on Twitter IG. We can figure something out. If it isn't obvious why I call them broken heart videos because he puts a little emoji in there every time, he would beg these people to stop. It seems like at this time he couldn't really handle the trolling. Rushing to post these broken heart videos are obviously going to fuel even more attacks. It makes them feel like they won or his responses were for comedic purposes, and he knows he's going to get attention, growing his fan base and following. But the broken heart videos aren't just to address hackers, he would also address his trolls. For example, he posted a video proving to his chat that he takes showers. Hours, as I can see right here, I'm showing y'all proof right now, I take shower. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna hear no more hate comments about me taking a shower no more. And this other one where he says his real name. Uh, it's my name, my real name is Jawan. it's not Frank, y'all know what's my name? Which I don't think is his real name. This video has 5 million views, and all the comments are about his fan base being toxic and that he deserves better. But some people just feel very confused by this. Live streaming can get out of hand with trolls. But if someone gets pushed to crying just for people wanting to know their real name, or they feel the need to prove that they actually take showers, leads some people to believe that you may not be fit for this career. Or again, Speed is trolling everyone back, but he gets sympathy from his chat because he's very good at making this seem real. The video blows up and gets likes, views, and subs. Then he goes back to streaming the next day with tons of new viewership, never addresses the situation that happened the day before, and then the cycle repeats again a couple weeks later. It's a very strange middle ground where people can't tell if he's actually upset by these things or if he's on some 600 IQ marketing strategy. So now let me ask you what you think. Look how mad he gets at this comment. You probably think that salad dressing is spicy, bro. What are you talking about? Bro, like, what are you, bro, you talking about salad dressing? What are you talking about? Obviously, this is a harmless troll comment. But do you think he's genuinely mad about this? Or do you think he just uses it as an excuse to rage and freak out because it hypes up the chat and might be a viral clip later on? Chances are you think it's fake as well. But sometimes these things were going too far, like the jacket video. My cousin gave me this jacket, y'all. I swear to God, my God. Now I just broke this shit, bro. You, you, you. So what caused this was him losing the game, crying, physically harming himself, then ripping his jacket. And basically for this entire game and really this whole stream, his chat was saying rude things to him. So losing the game was actually just the final straw. But this reaction to me doesn't look very fake. Hello, ah, stop donating! Stop donating! I don't want it! I don't want it! I don't want it! Oh, I'm done. Oh, God, I'm out of this bitch. Oh, my mama. Now, it's not like Speed is 100% innocent and his chat attacks him for no reason. I made basically a whole video about this, but real quick, let me just say that oftentimes the chat copies the behavior of the streamer. You attract the type of people that you act like. So, judging off his Omegle streams alone. Oh. Yeah, you killed his fuck. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, if you grab me 1 through 10, well, join me. Be completely honest. A 7.5. Really? After I called you, kill this f I lied. I, I, you, nah, shut the f up. I lied to you, and you gonna give me a 7.5? There are specific people that want to watch this content. Generally toxic people. Even if he's joking and he's just playing around or whatever, he's got a little edgy sense of humor, that's fine. But you're still gonna attract people who just genuinely want to see you bully people and be toxic all the time. 
So if you just want to have a normal stream, but the chat wants you to be toxic, they are going to take it out on you. Basically, his live streams from here on out would be him playing a game, chat torments him and says a bunch of annoying stuff, and then he handles it well. But about 20 minutes in, he'll have a rage moment. Then slowly rage more and more until he loses a game and ends the stream. Some days he handles the chat better than others. But every stream is filled with people trying to get him to freak out. I haven't really talked that much about his chat, but as it multiplied by the thousands, it got super toxic. Like the things they would say to him, whether it was just in the chat or through donations, is bad, terrible. So bad, I don't even feel comfortable putting clips of them in this video. And obviously he can't control what they say. People will figure out a way to say terrible things no matter what. So leaning into the freakouts and rage moments became a double-edged sword for him because they were genuinely pissing him off some days and other days he is just trolling them back. Either way, it's a high stress situation. Blood pressure goes up, heart rate goes up. It's not a good long-term strategy. But Speed is not even close to the first person to use freakouts as a way to grow. Freakouts and rage moments have been a huge part of live streaming forever since video games are so damn frustrating. Flight Reacts, Pugatti, and even Aiden Ross mastered the art of the freakout as a growth strategy. Anyways, for spring of 2021, he kept that same cycle of consistent streaming, rage moments, and broken heart videos. He had around 50,000 subscribers and was averaging more than a thousand or so people in his chat. His viewers started clipping his freakouts and funny moments and posting them on TikTok. It got to the point where multiple pages have built big followings just by posting his freakouts. And the amount of views they were getting are just staggering. I think it also helped that Aiden Ross was peaking at this time. He created an audience of people who like edgy humor, and live streaming in general was peaking at this time. So Speed provided something that was similar, but in his own unique way. In fact, he actually started a new trope that people really liked. Barking. Yes, Speed started barking when he got angry. which were some of the most popular clips that went viral on TikTok. The TikTok clips got a ton of new people interested in him. It made him grow faster than ever. In March, April, and May, he jumped from around 50,000 subscribers to 300,000 subscribers. But it was in June where it all culminated into something huge. He started putting his subscriber count on the screen and basing his stream around how fast he was growing because he was gaining subscribers really quickly. On June 22nd, he did his 400K stream, where he just kind of passed time waiting for him to hit the new milestone. When he was about to hit it, a ton of people watching started unsubscribing, hoping for a freak out, in which he did a little bit. Then two days later, he was about to hit 500,000 subs. Same thing happened. He got close, they would unsub, he freaks out, and everyone loves it. It became this little game, watching his sub count go up and up. Three days later, 600k stream. Then the next day, 700k. He went to bed and woke up on June 29th to find out that he was about to hit 800,000 overnight. So he went live that morning. Then later on in that same day, maybe 12 hours later, he was about to hit 1 million subscribers. In 24 hours, he gained 300,000 subscribers. And if you thought that was crazy, the very next day, June 30th, he hit 1.5 million subscribers. Obviously, Speed put in a ton of work until this point, but he also got a little lucky that thousands of hundreds of thousands of people were eager to see his reactions. As his sub count went up, it became sort of a game for people. It slowed down a little bit at the 1.5 million mark, but by the middle of July, he hit 2 million subscribers, meaning that in about three weeks, he went from 300K to 2 million. Call it luck, call it a meme, call it whatever you want. But at this point, he was still growing like crazy and entertaining the millions of people that subscribed to him. So clearly he took advantage of the situation and maintained their interest. After this, Speed was done with NBA 2K. He outgrew the game so fast. He knew that these people wanted him to be as crazy as possible all the time. So that's what he gave them. He also took a trip to LA to link up with Aiden Ross and many other streamers. For some reason, watching that in-person connection just changes the viewer's perspective. It's almost like the viewer is part of the friend group. Plus, he seemed to be a lot happier. He wasn't giving in to the trolls, and he wasn't getting DDoS attacks kicking him offline. When he went back home to Ohio, it was almost exclusively trolling people on Omegle, more getting kicked offline, and more broken heart videos. But something else huge happened. Speed's unforeseen music career began in August of 2021. He had a new hit single called Duty Booty, with a high quality music video in which he was wearing his favorite shirt, barking, and twerking with his boys. The song was actually very well received, which made him want to do even more music. He would start uploading a song every month and sometimes twice per month. Now with over 1 million monthly listeners on Spotify, tens of millions of views on YouTube, clearly his fans are loving his music. And truthfully, it's not that bad. He has a lot of potential. 
definitely a lot of questionable lyrics. I don't know if he wants to do this seriously or if he wants to do it as a meme. I mean, that seems to be his whole career at this point. For all of fall 2021, he just kept doing what he normally does. Streaming Omegle, scary games, some Fortnite, freaking out, dropping music, which is song Shade getting over 20 million views on YouTube, barking, chat saying the most terrible things to him. But the e-dates and IRL dating became something that his chat demanded. Watching Speed interact with girls was their new favorite thing, probably because once the girl said something that he didn't like or or they weren't into him, he would just bark, scream, or insult them, which is funny because literally nobody would react like that. But one day, Aiden Ross invited him to do an e-date with Ash Cash and a ton of other big streamers. And Speed took it too far. Say if we're the last two people on Earth and we had to reproduce to make the world continue. No! Um, reproduce with me? No, because that means our kids will have to intertwine and then their kids, no. Who's gonna stop me? I will. If we're the last two people on Earth, who gonna stop me? G, You're I'm... not stopping me. If we the last two people on earth, who gonna yeah, stop yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, chill out, chill out. Just you're good. My you're re my fault, my. Oh, I'm tripping. You're good. Oh, I'm freaking. Oh, I'm tripping. I'm thinking I'm on Omegle. Now, this question that he asked her is a running joke that Speed does on Omegle. It's a joke that works in his community and for his chat and his fans. But as you can imagine, a lot of women don't find this joke very funny. Nor do a lot of other people's fans who don't know Speed. Now, he got eliminated from this e-date, obviously, and he didn't like that. Man, f this e-date. Fuck it in two, bro. Mm, God, fuck them niggas, bro. That shitty ass e date, bro. He started to blame Ash Cash and Aiden. And this is where I started to question a lot of those e dates. Do streamers actually take them seriously? I thought they were just for entertainment. Like, they weren't actually gonna get dates with any of these people. Is Speed's reaction fake? This is where Speed towing the line of what's real and what isn't becomes a little tricky for him. He took the joke too far, plain and simple. But now saying fk Aiden and Ash Cash for kicking you out and that they're wrong for that? This turned into a little beef between Aiden and Speed, which again, I don't know if it's real or not. Speed's joke went viral on various social medias and had a lot of people angry. Ash Cash had a lot of words to say about it on Twitter, rightfully so, but Aiden didn't stand up for Speed because he knew he was wrong. And Speed never really addressed it again. Today, I think they're all good and Speed hasn't really done an e-date since then, which is also probably a good thing. I think a little clarity between what is a character and what is real life would help Speed out a lot. He's going to continue to get himself in sticky situations if he keeps being edgy like he is. But I also understand that the lore of not knowing what's real and what isn't is exactly what makes him so interesting. But sometimes you can get lost in the character. You play it so much that you even forget who you really are. I mean, the more crazy he acts, and the more his views go up, and his chat rewards him, the formula is difficult to maintain because the chat doesn't really care about your well-being. They want to see you push the limits, because they don't have to suffer the consequences if you go too far. I understand he's young, it's normal to make mistakes, I bet he'll look back on some clips in a few years and cringe at himself. That's totally normal. But when you're making tons of money off the same exact thing that is causing the controversy, it's hard to make a defense. He seems like a really good kid, obviously very entertaining, and not bad music either. I would hate to see him get lost in this character that he built, but I wish the best for him. And I most definitely can't knock the hustle, because 4 million subs in one year is insane. But maintaining that high stress, chaotic, and angry character just doesn't really seem like it can last that long. I mean, look at Roy Purdy, who built a brand of being positive, happy-go-lucky, dancing, smiling, wearing bright colors, millions of people around the world loving him for his positive energy, and even he had a tough time maintaining that. But if you want to hear more about that story, check out this video right here. Drink water, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.